Well, good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Guess what? We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm your host, Apostle Pitts, coming to you live from our ELPministries.com. Get ready for an exciting venture into the Word of God, and we are excited about having you here. We're going to do some fantastic things. I think I got the amen, the, the, the laptop just available for, for the testing, so we're going to try to do that tonight. But amen, I want you to join us real quickly because we're going to continue this journey into the book of Revelation and reveal these truths that God has given us in the form of Jesus Christ. Amen. So join us real quickly. We're excited to have you guys aboard. We're looking forward to what God is doing. And again, we're, we're in the process of trying to uh, bring back some of those, uh, some of those uh, uh, past broadcasts. We have them downloaded onto our hard drive computers, and we're going to try to amen, get them back up to speed in our uh, glorious um, uh, broadcast back on Facebook. So that's readily available to you. If not, we might even try to put it on our uh, website so you can uh, get it there so they won't have a chance of losing that uh, uh, ever again. So again, we thank God for you. We appreciate you. We love you. Amen. We thank you for joining us and sticking with us. Thank you for your prayers that have gone forth and making sure that we are uh, well taken care of. So we thank God for you. Again, I want to put it out there. If you know anybody in the Carolinas, either North Carolina or South Carolina, amen. You And you don't and mind uh, sharing their contact information or even introducing me to that person, uh, church or whatever the case may be, city officials. It doesn't have to be a pastor, just anybody that has influence in the state, in the city. We want to get to know them so that we can uh, move forward in building our uh, ministries in this area. And also there's some things that we want to do and we're going to need some help to do that. So again, we, we thank God for you. We love you and we give you honor and glory. And we thank God for all of you that have joined. And again, I, I ask you to share these broadcasts, share, share, share. That's what it's all about, getting the word out. God has freely given us uh, some revelation knowledge and also open a door so that we can learn how to walk with him in revelation and understand how precious, how glorious, and how accessible that God is to us even now. So again, we want to thank God for that. Thank God for you. Some of you have been joining us for just about two years and upcoming in March. I've got a, you guys got to shoot me some, uh, uh, some su su suggestions on how can we celebrate because in March, I, I believe it's going to be March the 14th or the 15th. That's going to mark our two year straight anniversary on Facebook. Uh, every, uh, try to be there every day. Uh, preaching the word of God, explaining the mysteries of God, making them plain, elevating you and advancing you into your true identity in Christ Jesus. And I know you've been blessed for it and blessed by it. And I'm asking you now to much is given, much is required. Find, ask God when you pray, ask God specifically, how can I bless that ministry? How can I bless that man of God? What can I do? And you'll realize you might not have this or that, but the understanding of what is it that you have in your hand, that is what God is going to use anything, anyway, the thing that God has given you. So again, we thank God for you now. We're always praying. I, I don't know about you, but I've been watching the news and, and uh, understanding uh, in the times that we live in. I tell you, these are some perilous times. And uh, I, I, I'll be turning, uh, um, I'm, I'm 63 and boy, I've seen some things in my lifetime that is actually unique to history itself. And so when I look at the pandemic and how it affected uh, millions and millions of people around the world and how it has disrupted uh, uh, systems of men and how men would do things and how men would interact. And, 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 and as one door closed, another door opens up. And believe you, believe you me, I'm gonna say this and uh, uh, don't have any evidence other than just the unction of the spirit. A lot of this is man-made. Uh, I've studied this in, when I was in my corporate life about crisis management. Uh, in businesses, businesses exist to meet a need to service individuals. Doctors are there because you don't know everything about your body, how to heal yourself. So they go to school to learn about uh, the body and how it works. And then they go ahead and sell that knowledge and services back to you. Uh, mechanics, you name it, plumbers, electricians, they, they all do the same thing. 
They, they actually create, uh, there is a need that they, su they supply. That, that comes right out of the Bible as well. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. But you only have one need according to the spirit. That's to know God. And once you know him, he becomes, amen, the supplier and the help. Everything that you need is tied up in God. So we again, we thank God for what God is doing. You got to pray for our world. We're the light of the world. And a lot of things are done purposely to cause another thing to happen. You understand wars and rumors of wars are not just something that happens. It is instigated by men out of lust, out of greed, out of fear, out of depopulation, whatever the case may be. It's all orchestrated. You hear what I'm saying? And so you got to understand we're in a cruel and wicked and dark world. Anything in darkness is, is limited only by the imagination of men. And you got to realize when a person is scared or whatever the case may be, they want, they might wind up shooting their own self or shooting you in the process. So you got to realize we got to pray. Our prayers make a difference. Our prayers bring in light. Light bring in understanding and quells all kind of fears and misunderstanding. So pray. The Bible says men ought to always pray. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to pray. Um, I don't know if you've been following the news, but we're going to pray to make sure that the um, the things done spiral out of place over there in in um, um, in, in in Russia and Ukraine over there in that place there they they are setting up and they're they're uh, it's like uh, 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 somebody finna the fight in the street they're 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 eyeing each other out they're put getting their positions in place but we're gonna pray that God a man quails put a put 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 a stop to that whole posturing that that might lead to uh, a war and so let's pray father in the name of jesus we thank you so much for meeting us here for being our god for opening up our understandings and making us to know who you are by faith and now god we pray that we walk in the dimension of that knowledge, that we prove our faith, that we know that Christ is in us and that we're walking in a transformation from the old man to the new man. Thank you for the grace that you've given us that gives us the time to embrace this knowledge and to experience change. We thank you so much, God, for, for giving us your precious son, Jesus, who makes all of this possible because it's in him that we live and move and have our being. And it's by your love that you have initiated this so great a grace and this treasure that's given us uh, through Christ Jesus. Now cause us to become aware on how to operate in Christ, how to operate by faith, how to learn, and how to change and how to embrace and how to receive and how to execute your will in the earth. I thank you right now, God, for all these precious men and women of God that come to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And I thank you, God, for giving us ears to hear all of that and so causing us to walk therein. We bind all uh, evidence and the planting of doubt and fear in our hearts by this world, uh, uh, specifically by Satan, who is the God of this world, who endeavors to blind the mind so that we will not understand and react out of fear, out of emotions, out of sadness, amen, always being the tail and not the head. But you've given us a new mind and you've given us a spirit that it can empower us to walk in that new mind and be transformed in your image and into your likeness. We by faith claim what you say is true and therefore we embrace it, hold on to it, and we allow that word to wash us and present us faultless before the Father. Now I pray God, as we live in these perilous times and a dreadful period in our life, I pray God that you would deliver us from, amen, completely the coronavirus and all other diseases that come but to steal, kill, and to destroy. You told us, God, that the, the coronavirus will begin to curtail and the trend line will go uh, south and be less and less, and that has happened. But still, there is a lot of people dying from that awful and, and deadly disease, and not to mention all the, all, all the other diseases like heart attacks and cancer and strokes and diabetes and a host of other diseases on top of that that come up for the steal kill and to destroy but I pray in the name of Jesus God that you will move by your power 
and that you will cause an enlightenment to come, that we will walk in our proper identity and that we will re reconcile all things by the knowledge that comes from you. But I, I pray in the meantime that you will bring comfort to these families that have lost loved ones, not numbers, not stats, but loved ones, mothers and fathers, uncles and aunts and brothers and sisters and all different types of relationship, people that they know and people that they love. God, I pray that you will comfort their hearts right now and that you will turn back, amen, the effect of the enemy and cause us to prosper and be in health even as our soul prosper. And for those, God, that, amen, during this time, understand that this gigantic distraction come to distract us from what God is revealing at this day. God, give us steadfastness. Cause us to press toward the mark. Cause us to fast and to pray that we will not be distracted, that we will see what God is doing and call this day a great day and say, look what the Lord has done. God calls these ambassadors to be in place, give them spiritual insight, power, knowledge, and resources in the form of currency or money or whatever it may be, that they might establish the kingdom in the earth in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for Pastor and Apostle Tiffany Hamilton, that you are calling to recover to complete uh, wholeness, 100% lacking nothing, God. The things that she suffered, I pray right now that you will restore her body and make it ever with whole and even further that you will return her to the days of her youth so that she lacks nothing, that nothing has escaped, nothing, amen, takes, a tra takes away, that you will lengthen the days, God, that the enemy has tried to shorten through his attack in her bodies. Likewise, we pray, amen, for Apostle Roderick Davenport, that you will also, amen, mend his body and bring healing and restoration and vitality to him, God, that he would like nothing, that no time will be lost, that all things are working together for, amen, their good and our good. We are asking a special prayer for Brother Bracy, God, that's lying in, amen, in ICU on a breathing machine, and the enemy would, amen, greatly like to take his life, but God, you come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And we stand in the gap for Brother Bracy. We stand in the gap and we reverse, amen, all of the effects of death and all of the effect of disease and all of the effect of pain and all of the effect, amen, that comes to lessen. God, I pray that the abundant life will overshadow him, that you will restore all of his organs and all of the functionality of them in the name of Jesus. And we cast out the pain and agony and frustration, God, that, amen, what was meant for evil, that you will raise him up, God, and give him a mighty testimony concerning the goodness of the Lord, God. And we thank you right now for him, for saving him and healing him and restoring him in the name of Jesus. God, use him as a testimony. Use him as a sign in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you right now and bless the community as a whole, every nation, every person in leadership. Give them the power and the integrity to do at least the right thing. In the name of Jesus, God, we bind that thief and that robber that comes to intercept that comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, that comes to, amen, to create false leadership or come to compromise. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be a strong presence of conscience in these politicians, in these leaders right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I praise you right now that the, amen, the God of this world will not influence them <clears throat> to take lives or to set up risks, amen, that ordinary people will be harmed based on poor leadership. I pray that you will order their steps in the name of Jesus, God, and hinder steps that go, amen, wayward and cause, amen, amen, a wickedness to reign. We thank you right now for being in the midst of all of this. In Jesus' name we pray. We give you all the honor and all the glory. And lastly, Lord, we pray that thy kingdom come, that thy will be done on earth as it is in the heaven, the heaven which I call the abode in which you live. And that abode is in man, for our body was made to be an inhabitation of God through the spirit, which is a definition of heaven. God, we thank you right now for making these mysteries plain and for causing us to have the right concepts and to walk upright in you in Jesus' name. 
We give you all honor in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I hope you're excited to, today because I believe God is getting ready to do some, amen, supernatural things. And amen, I am going to move right on right now because I feel my help. And I, I, amen, let me go and give salutations. I'm about to jump over myself here. Give salutations for those that have joined us. And again, do me a favor. We lost some, amen, some people during that time our page was sabotaged. We knew something was happening because the revelation of God was so pure and so plain. But nevertheless, amen, we can bring them back. Contact them. Share the page. Let them know we're back at it. Amen. And nothing shall hinder us and nothing shall stop us from the love of God. We, thought, we want to thank God for Papa Curtis. Thank God for uh, Brother Michael. God is in control, Connor. Brother Jimmy Bell, Sister Jennifer Bray, Sister Yvonne Cummins, blessings on you. And Sister Cummins, we heard that you're a great teacher. And amen, I got that from Pastor Cassandra. So keep doing, keep keep up the good works and God's going to do some tremendous things. Th thank God for Sister Barr Moore that's joining us. Amen. Thank God for you. Thank God for Brother Jerome. Thank God for Sister Tina uh, Tomlin that's joining us. Sister Martha Bass, blessings on you. Thank God for Brother Mikhail. Thank God for uh, Brother William Mafu Retisi that's joining us. Blessings on you, man of God. Thank God for, amen, for Pastor Cassandra Brantley that's joining us. Sister Del Zelma uh, Noble that's joining us. Sister, amen, Swanee, Prophet Swanee uh, and Evangelist Swanee MacArthur and her husband that's joining us. Amen. Pastor Tangela Harris, we bless us on you. Brother Mateo, we see you. Bless us on you. Brother and Prophet Sean Alexander, we thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for you and all of you that have supported this ministry, supporting us through prayers, through finance, and especially, amen, get the word out. Share, share, share. This is for the body of Christ. We are all members in the body of Christ. We don't do the same thing. We don't have the same message because we have different assignments. But what brings us all together is we all operate in the body and Christ being the head of the body. In my natural body, I have, amen, uh, individual members, fingers and hands and legs and members that you can see and members that are hidden, that function, amen, to make the body of me, amen, function. You understand? Amen. So we got to understand there is something bigger than my individual tasks, my callings or myself. There is something greater. The Bible says greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. So we got to tap in to the greatness of Christ because it's in him that we live and move and have our being. So we thank God for all of our, our patrons. We thank God for those that are South Africa, Northern Africa. Thank God for those in European countries. And again, we thank God for those in Russia, Japan and China and in the islands that, amen, will amen, view this broadcast, amen, and, and move into greater dimensions of truth because we want to make it plain. We want to, we want to reconcile this, this more than an idea, this reality of Christ in you to walk in, amen, your true personality and true nature that God has given us by Christ Jesus. Thank God for you. Now, listen, let's, let's try doing this test tonight. I've got the answers from a couple days ago. We're going to try to catch up. And this, we're going to do this one time. I'm going to put new, new questions on tomorrow just to try to redeem the time. But let's see how we can do tonight. If you struggle with these questions, then what we will do, we will go back and we will uh, again go, go over them. But let's see if we can do this tonight. And you know what to do. Type in the word ready. And then that'll, amen, trigger, amen, us going into this Q&A section of the broadcast. All right. Just type in ready. I see some. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. All right. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see if it works. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Mm -mm. Uh, let's see what we can do. Oh, y'all give me just a minute. Just a minute. I had it just for a second. All right, here we go. Hey, Amen. Let's see if it works. All right, let's go. We see something. All right, the first question is, who is able to present you faultless before the Father? We've been talking about there is no fault. There's no guile. Who is that 
empower a person that's able to present you faultless before the Father. Type that answer in. Type that answer in and we're going to go about and be about our Father's business. Amen. We see, amen. Some of you typing it in. It's Christ. Amen. You're absolutely right. Amen. Christ is the one, amen, that it has the ability to present us faultless before the Father. So you can't do it, but he can. He is the author and the finisher of that truth. And that's one of the tricks of the devil. He'll put condemnation because it's, he says stuff like you should have been you should have been able to do this or you are smarter than this or you're more mature than this no 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 it's only Christ the ability that Christ who can present us faultless before the father he is the author and the finisher of your work what we are doing is by grace we are examining ourselves and if there is something that's out of place if there is something that we find that's not consistent with Christ we simply get it right. We ask for forgiveness and we get it right. Now there is no condemnation. We're in a growth standpoint. You understand? We're not in a sin environment. We're in a grace environment and grace allows us to change. You remember grace is that unmerited favor. All right. Next question. Next question. All right. It's starting to work again. <laughs> oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Next question. If any man offend not in word, the same is a what? If any man offend not in word, the same is a what? <laughs> the same is a what? Mm. Brother Jerome, you headed in the wrong direction, brother. If any fan offend not, not offend, but any, if any man offend not, listen to what I'm saying. If any man offend not in word, he is a what? No, 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 no. Listen to the question. If any man offends not, I didn't say if any man offend, it's offend not. In the word, the same is a what? Oh, we're going to have to do this tomorrow. I see that right now. Y'all playing with me today. <laughs> Let me give you the answer. It is a perfect man that is found in James 3rd chapter and the first verse. If any man offend not in word, in other words, your words are not offensive to you or anybody else. You have reached the status of a perfect man or a mature word, a man, a man that a man has understanding and has knowledge and knows how to apply it in any situation and any circumstance, it is a perfect man. Every believer ain't perfect, you understand? There are believers that are babes. There are believers that kind of growing up. There are believers that are entangled. There are believers, amen, that are going through deliverance. So every believer have not reached the status of perfection. That status of perfection means maturity to, amen, present God no matter what season it is and no matter what situ situation it is. Y'all hear me? Make sure you type that in. <laughs> Next question. Oh, boy. I can't take another week off, man. That enemy, he tried to steal too much. <laughs> Next question. The word is bringing us to a state of being in our what? The word is bringing us to a state of being in our what? Brother Jerome, close. In our mind, that's right. <laughs> it's, it's bringing us to a state of mind in our state of, of being in our mind. Now listen, I know I have to keep saying this, that it's just the teacher in me. But when I say word and I've capitalized that and put two uh, 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 highlights around it, that word is Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was made flesh. If you take it all the way to the end, 
you know the word that is flesh is called Jesus Christ. And, and the word is a spirit. Your words are spirit and they are life. God poured out his spirit, or like, just like he said, poured out the word upon all flesh, sons and your daughters. It's the word that cleanses us from all our right. So you got to understand, we're not talking about scriptures. We're talking about something greater than the scriptures, the personification of God himself. Not the dictations of, uh, of, of manuscripts on, on tablets or paper that came through holy men. We're talking about the origin of the, of that, of the scriptures themselves, which is the word. Y'all hear me? <laughs> Amen. I just want to make sure you understand. Glory to God. Amen. Next question. Next question. Here we go. He that walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks what? Finish that out. He speaks what? That's plain old scripture. He that walks uprightly and works righteousness. Amen. And speaks. Oh, that's close. The truth. That's it. <laughs> That's found in Psalms 15. He speaks the truth again. Let me just reiterate. We're not talking about, amen, facts. The truth is a person. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He speaks the spirit of God in his body as the truth. Jesus is the truth. All right. So I know we've been in this world, we've been in cer certain uh, societies and civilizations and certain word means certain things, all right? But I want you to elevate your mind because the word that we're talking about has to become you. It cannot just be thoughts in your mind. It cannot be in the category of just scriptures that's in a, in a Bible or on an app on your phone. The truth is a person. God is the truth and the word. You understand? So when we say he that walks uprightly and works righteously and speaks the truth, you understand? That man has reached a status of consciousness and relationship with God that they walk as one. Do you, do you hear me? Oh, glory to God. I just want to make sure you understand. We're not, we're not, we're not talking two different things. Some people say the truth that, and that, that means uh, telling, not telling a lie. Eh? That doesn't mean that to me. The truth is Jesus Christ. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Everything else is a subset of that. Uh, uh, lying as we know it and telling the truth as the world knows it is just a behavior. I'm talking about the person, the source, the root, amen, that if you get to the root, you can change the fruit. You can change the behavior. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, glory to God. And that is available for you and I even now as we speak. Last question, and we're going to get on into, amen, to topic tonight. And it is, Pilate found no fault in him. Who then, who then, okay, I, I must read that wrong. Uh, uh, who did find the fault then? Who then did? I got one too many who's in there. <laughs> Pilate said he found no fault in him, but somebody found fault in him. Who were the people that found the fault in Jesus? They were the what? Pharisees, Sadducees. That's right. That's right. And in general, it is the religious man. It is the religious man. You understand? So there was more than one Pharisee. There was more than one scribe. There was more than one Sadducee. There were they they were categories. They were denomination. It represented a group of people that believed that way. When you cast them all in the same boat, they become the religious man. You understand? That's the commonality that they had. They rejected Christ and maintained their own idea of godliness through their doctrine rather than believe the truth that God sent. You know what pure faith is? Pure faith is believing on him 
that God has sent. Oh, glory to God. Amen. I hope you've been blessed by this. Amen. Let's let's go on now. <laughs> I am excited about what God is doing. We're getting this thing working a little bit better than before. So thank God for that. But we, amen, we're going to move on. We have been, amen, going down. And I've, I've purposely kind of recap and bring us back to the discipline. See how simple, how quickly we can get uh, un uh, custom the thing we have been doing this for almost a year and and now this has become a part of us but it's easy to fall away it's to get dull of healing for something that you've been doing for decades we've just been doing this for less than two years but the way we've been living has been for a lifetime so there's a lot of things that we have to dig around and break up the fallow ground and relearn some things and and purposely amen on purpose get into a mindset that can quickly change us. And that's what's happening. Y'all who understand? So we understand that process of becoming involves following the Lamb. The men as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And that process of following Him brings us into agreement, and that agreement causes us to know Him. That happens on the natural as well as in the Spirit. If you hang around, amen, my mom said, if you hang around wet paint, it's going to get on you. Everybody's going to know that's who you've been hanging out with because you sound just like them. You're not trying to do it. It's a operation that happens when you do this, that happens. So when you follow after your spiritual, amen, uh, identity, your spiritual knowledge begins to kick in. Wherever you spend the majority of your time, it is in that environment that begins to cause a transformation of yourself. So if you spend more time with God in prayer, in fasting, in, in broadcasts like these, then that knowledge that is constantly being poured out begins to change you before you even know it, before anybody else see it. You begin to sound just like him. And that change and that testimony is a proof of your faith. The Bible declares that we are to prove all things, just not walk in faith without proof. We have to prove it. Hold fast to that which is good. That's 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. It tells us that we need to examine ourselves, not judge ourselves or not judge somebody else. We have to get the beam out of our own eyes. You know, judge yourself. Judge yourself. Not, let, me, let, me just, let me just correct that. Not judge yourself. Examine yourself. Because you, you're examining yourself to, to cause yourself to make corrections, to be in alignment to reconcile. That happens when you, you go through examination. When you wake up in the morning, go to the mirror. That's what you're doing. You're examining yourself. How do I want to present myself? How do I want people to see me? So let me look in the mirror and make sure I approve of what I'm seeing in the mirror. And what I see in the mirror is what people will see when I go out in public. You're examining yourself. You're not looking in the mirror and just because your hair is out of place, you judge yourself and say, it ain't gonna never get right. I might as well go back to bed. No, 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 no. We are to examine ourselves, amen, and therefore we will prove to our own selves, uh, know how that Jesus Christ is in us, except we be reprobated or crazy. We are walking in godly headship. We know that happens. All of this happens when we start falling after. We, we, we start realizing we're not just following Jesus for what he can do. We're following him because of who he is. You understand? We want the, the person, we want to know him because knowing him transforms us. We can watch the things that he do and never do what he does. But if we become who he is, these signs shall follow him that believe. You hear what I'm saying? Jesus, amen, is our internal guidance system. And we, we learn how to trust the leading of the Lord. Don't call it something. Don't talk about I had an intuition. Learn how to realize that there's a spirit in man that giveth him understanding. And you got to know where your help comes from and give him thanks. You know what I'm saying? You don't go around, somebody gave you something, and you say, somebody, I'm telling somebody thank you. you. You have to know their name. If you don't say, hey, thank you, Mr. Pitts, for giving me this, or thank you, Mr. John, or thank you, Miss Susan, for doing this, and you say, hey, somebody, I don't know who you are, but thank you, you you'll offend them. So know where your help come from. Your help coming from the Lord. And as we go through that process, we are coming into being the first fruits. If you press in, you're going to see, amen, the fruits of your labor. You're going to see how things are changing in your life. And I pray, amen, 
that you'll get to a point of maturity where there is no fault. You won't fault in you won't offend in your words. You won't offend in anything because you have this internal unction of the Holy Ghost that guides you through all the storms, all the pitfalls, all the traps. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil for cause thou art with us. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So, amen, he's bringing us to a state of being, not just a man, some I can pick out and say, I ain't did anything wrong. The no fault is a state of being, not an examination of your actions. It's a state of being. You understand? Christ is faultless. Christ is the perfect man. Christ is the stature that we are trying to reach. Stice, Christ is the first born of many brethren. We are the many brethren. We are the sons of God. We are the 144,000 that stands with him in the spirit in a high place of consciousness called Mount Zion. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So we were realizing, amen, that that is happening all within us. And last night we talked about, amen, identifying the big lie. <laughs> the big lie is not, amen, somebody telling a whopper, somebody, amen, stretching the truth. The big lie, the biggest one ever told is by the father of the lie, which is Satan. And that big lie is to tell you, amen, that you are the old man. <laughs> oh, no, sir. The big lie is the old man. It's in that old man we find the lie. We find the guy. We find the false. And we got to get out of that. We can't walk in the old man. That's why, amen, Jesus, amen, gives us, amen, a savior in the form of the Holy Ghost, in the form of himself. He pours out his spirit upon all flesh and he activates the new man that was formed in Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And you see a transformation just, amen, as you draw not to him, he draws out of you the Christ likeness that he has sown in you before the foundation of the world. You hear what I'm saying? You no longer walk as the lie or the old man and his deeds or what we call the Adamic nature or the old Adam. But we begin to walk in the newness of life. You hear what I'm saying? This is all the Lord's doing. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Now let's move on tonight. We're going to talk about a little bit about the man who creates God. You say, what? Yes, what I said. The man who creates God. We're still in Revelation 14, chapter 5th verse, and I'm going to read it just for your edification. It says, and in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault. But, be, but I begin to talk about the truth as we talk, because that word uh, no guile means, uh, uh, Greek word means lie. There's no lie in them. The lie is the old man. And as long as you dwell in the consciousness of the old man, you dwell in the lie. You're going to tell a lie. You're going to stress your truth. There's going to have to be some craftiness. You, you can try to do good all you want. It's not the fact of effort. It is the era of identity. It is not effort that you need. It is the true identity. Out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living waters. This he spake of the spirit. You got to understand it is the identity that calls its amen, the fruit of itself to exist. If I got a bad identity, I'm going to do bad things. If I got an identity of God like this, I'm going to produce godly like things. Amen. The, 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 the fruit is the evidence of the identity of the tree. If I eat this kind of fruit, I know it's an orange tree. If I eat this kind of fruit, I know it's a grapefruit tree. You understand what I'm saying? So, amen, we are trying to, amen, amen, change the tree, amen, by trying to manipulate the fruit. No, no, no. Get to the source. Get to the identity. And the identity will bring forth or bear out itself. Oh, glory to God. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. So we understand uh, uh, the man. I got to talk about a little bit about man who creates God instead of the other way around. It is a man, God, who creates the man, not the man who creates God. And, and amen, the fall of man is to, amen, cause himself to create out of his own imagination God. There is false God. There are images, false images. In the Old Testament, we call them, man will make idols and, and groves places of worship that had nothing to do with God. It came out of the imagination of darkness. You understand? 
And we got to understand that it is absolutely plain what God is doing now. He's making it so plain that we cannot err. So he says in John, the 14th chapter and the sixth verse, let me get a sweet one. He says this, he says, uh, Jesus said unto him, Jesus said unto him that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Isn't that ironic? I, I talk about the way, the truth, and life a lot, but that last part, the only way you're going to come before God, you have to come as a man. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. So as we approach God likeness, what is happening is we have to come as a man. You can't come as a dog. You can't come as an angel. You can't come as a bishop. You got to come as a man, a man. For God made the man in his image and after his likeness. So that when Jesus appeared in this natural realm, he had to appear as a man. He couldn't walk in the fullness of God as a child, as a baby. He couldn't do it. He was limited. But when he reached the, the full age of about 33 in that culture, it represents the fullness, the prime state of a man. You understand? It is at that prime, his fullness, that God declared, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And then he walks, amen, demonstrating God as a man. Do you hear me? So you've got to reconcile God and man because God has made man to be his inhabitation or dwelling place so that you can say, when you see me, see who? The man, you see the father. If you don't have the man, you will not be able to see the father. If you go to a movie, let me just kick it out this way. If you go to a movie, and I, I had this experience when I was a little kid asking a whole lot of questions about what this and what that. And I went to this movie and the Holy Spirit, I didn't know at that time, I thought it was just my own mind. The Holy Spirit say, instead of looking at the screen, I want you to turn around and look at the lights coming out uh, uh, of the top. You know, where they, in the old time, they had the movie projector out of the top and it would shoot the, the movie to the, the white screen. And everybody would be looking at the white screen and enjoy the movie, the sound and everything. But in this instance, the Lord told me, I, 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 he said, look at the lights. He said, are you at the movie? I, I said, I'm at the movie. He said, look at the lights. He said, do you understand what's going on? I said, no. I could hear things, but there was no visual effect because all I saw was green lights and yellow lights flickering. He said, why can't you understand what's happening? Uh, uh, and, and you see the lights. The lights is there. They're flickering, they're in motion. I say because it needs a screen to capture it so that the captured light is what I need to, amen, enjoy the movie. You know what the Lord said? He says, exactly. And your body is the screen that captures or embraces or, or occupies or fulfills the spirit of God that allows men to see your good works and glorify the Father. You are the project, uh, you are the screen in which God projects his image, in which God projects his likeness, and he involves and swallows up your life and so that your life is a reflection of this good God walking with the man. Do you hear what I'm saying? And if we do not see this God as a present help, this God that's within me, this God that's transforming my life, this God that, amen, challenges me to open up my mouth and he on the inside will speak for me. This God that declares greater is he that is within me than he that's within the world. If we don't recognize his, amen, help, his presence, amen, within us, we are going to neglect and not know what God is doing. You can't know God. Amen. You cannot know what God is doing simply gazing into the spirit. You have to see the manifestation. The glory of God is, is, is designed to be glorified on the man. He glorified the man with goodness and mercy. He glorified the man with his anointing and presence. He glorified the man with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The man represents 
the only authorized agent to a man and glorify God. He is the exemplification of God. He, that's why God calls us an ambassador. That's why God called Jesus the personification of godliness through the spirit. He was the brightness of his coming. Do you understand what I'm saying? But in our, in our quest, in our emptiness, in the voidness of our journey in darkness, we there was something in us that longed to know God. But without the knowledge of God, we search for God in the heavens. We call the sun and anything that we didn't understand that was great. That's God. You understand what I'm saying? We made images of God out of fish and bird and lions and giraffe and, and all kind of things. We made images thinking that, oh, God, if I can, I, if I worship that thing, then I'll get the glory of that thing on my life. And it was not so. It was a false image. We created God. You understand? We were trying to make God show up based on our intellect, based on what we were doing. And we can shout of his glory every time. God called whatever was pleasant in our eyes that represented God false. You understand? God is going to make you. You can't make God. That is blasphemy. When man tries to become God, that's blasphemy. When man worships something that he creates, that is false idol worship. It is blasphemy to God. You understand what I'm saying? But when God is the author, when God is the initiator, when God is in you, creating you, transforming you, reconciling you, when God presents you before the Father, when God, amen, when you accept the worship, the work of God as the author and the finisher of your faith. When you believe what he says and his, these signs follow your belief, then you ain't creating God. God is creating you. But man, in his darkened state, in his fallen condition, in his blinded uh, uh, situation, in Romans 1, first chapter and 25th verse, it says, there was a, 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 a the God of this world. He changed the truth of God unto the unto a lie. It says in King James version, a lie. But in the original literal Greek, it reads, "Who changed the truth of God into the lie?" <laughs> you understand? But for readability, it it was translated as a a, and it should have been the. But nevertheless, we we gonna clarify it anyway. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. You understand? So the God of this world did not want you to understand the creator, to see the creator, because an example of this was, amen, when God spoke to the man of God and told him, look to the north, south, east, and west, and whatever you see is yours. If that is a true legal spiritual law, that it is a threat against what Satan is doing. So in order to make sure you never enter into that perfected law, he blinds the mind so you cannot see. And if you cannot see, you cannot become. You can't claim it. You hear what I'm saying? And he suggests to you what is true. He entices you to believe what is true. He makes you go down through the, through the journey of trial and error. Feeling your way around, ever learning, but never able to become. You keep going to the lie, saying, go over here and you'll find it. Go over there and you'll find it. Do this and you'll find it. It's all self-effort. It's all self-determined. You're not following anything. You're searching, amen, on your own reconnaissance, on your own dime. You hear what I'm saying? And because you're doing it without being led, it is rejected. Oh, glory to God. The message is just this. Christ is the truth, not a truth, the truth. And the old man is the lie. Christ is the truth. The old man is the lie. Make sure you write that down. I got to put that on the test. Uh, you hear what I'm saying? And the lie, glory to God, is Satan. Satan has always been the father of the lie, just as God is the father of his sons of God. Satan is the father of the lie or the father of the old man. You hear what I'm saying? He is reproducing himself 
as a man a movie being displayed on the screen he displays amen falsehood he displays a lie he displays an alternative to the word of god and as we project that in our life we become amen ambassadors and am adversaries of the lie and we amen we come and kill steal and to destroy and the world is full of it you hear what i'm saying oh blessed be the name of jesus look what god said a long time ago in uh, in john 8 chapter and the 44th verse i already quote this but it's worth saying it again he so he went to the pharisees and sadducees who represented doors into spiritual kingdom they represented an authority concerning a man keepers of the flame they were the one that people went to to understand what god is saying how to live how to have a relationship with god and look what god said to these gatekeepers look what god said to these keepers of the flame he said you are of your father the devil the father you are of your father and he tells them of the devil and the lust of your father which is where you're coming from. Ye do well. You will do. You're going to do what the lust of your father tells you to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode. He didn't live in the truth. You know what? We can live in the truth. But let me finish. He didn't live in the truth because there was no truth in him. Christ did not, amen, house himself in Satan. Christ did not house himself in darkness. Christ did not use, amen, anything that Satan has to reflect God. He, amen, is separated from, and he represents darkness. Oh, glory to God. And look what it says. Because there was no truth in him, when he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is a lie and the father of it. Everywhere you see a, you should insert the. He is the lie <laughs> and the father of it. Just as Christ is the truth and God is the father of it. Oh, glory to God. And so you got to understand, hallelujah, that amen, that God creates the man, not the man creating God. You understand? And so a lot of times we're trying to find God, but we're trying to find it in our imagination. We're trying to find it in our old man. The old man has to die. His, the reason why he has influence is because he's alive, fed by the lie. If we take ourselves and say, that's not us. But see, it takes a revelation of who you really are to say that I'm not that. You have to know who you are to, to reject what you're not oh glory to god and if the gospel be hid it's hid to them that are lost because in the good news is the good news of who you are your life is hid with christ in god oh blessed be the name of jesus it's only then will you begin to reject amen the false the lie the old oh blessed be the name of that's not who i am I am that I am by the grace of God. That truth comes, amen, through the good news by faith. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. He is the lie. So now I'm giving you the understanding that the lie is not simply not telling the truth because both of that is a childlike idea of knowledge. The knowledge is not uh, 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 something that happened out of your mouth. That's just the fruit of your life of understanding of who you are. You got to get to the fruit because if you get, I'm sorry, you got to get to the root because if you don't get to the identity, the root, then the fruit will keep coming season after season, season after season. When you try to do good, evil is always present. You got to find who you are, the truth of who you are. And the truth of who you are is that you were formed. That you, you, God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, which means now your origin is out of the spirit and not out of the flesh. You are a spirit that have a soul that lives in the body. You understand? It is in this alternative world that Satan has designed and has, has, has created a realm of sense 
conscious. If you, you don't believe it unless it makes sense to you here uh, of self-determination. You got to do it. You got to do this. You got to do that. And in, in, in order for it to be, uh, uh, is, if order for it to work, you got fleshly wisdom, how things work in the natural. You can, you got to smell it, touch it, taste it and all of this stuff. And you got your 10, 10 processes to do this. And you got your, your, your different ways to do this to be self-determined. It has nothing to do with the leading of the spirit. And therefore, you come always shout of the glory of God. You might be glorified in this world, but you will not be glorified in God. You won't know the things that God has given you. And you'll be limited because this world is in the part realm. It's limited. The Bible say in Revelation, the devil knows that his time is short. In other words, time governs him. Time doesn't govern God. God is eternal. But time governs Satan. He's under the rule of time. He knows that his time is short. And because his time is short, that means something that is timeless, a kingdom that's coming, that is higher and greater and has a greater potential is already emerging. And the kingdom of, the, of, of, of this world is passing away as with the old passing, as with everything attached to it. But you are to live forever. You are not of this world. You are of God. You might live in this world. You might walk in this world, but you're not of this world. And so there is an awakening of the truth concerning you. And now we will assume our God likeness, but not in this world. We're not the God of this world. We are, amen, gods in the kingdom of God. This world is not our home. We ain't fighting in this world. We, we come in this world only to, amen, to sow seed of light, to sow seed of consciousness, to let our light shine that men may see our good works and glorify the Father. We are ambassadors. We are evidence that there is something greater, amen, in us than just, amen, in the world. And so he, we, by showing up, we let every man see that it's available to all men, whosoever will, they can come to this same truth. You understand? And it is the God of this world that is trying to hide that information. He wants you to be a God in this world so you have no, you, you have no desire to be a God anywhere else. So he offers you the Godhood of independence from the life of God, but it's not the Godhood through the union with God. He says you can be a God independent from God, but that's a lie. <laughs> Without God, you can do nothing. So in our life, we value and we herald people in this world who have become self-created God. They were self-centered. They became truly the God of this world and not the expression of divine divinity or divine nature. They felt like they could do it themselves. And if anybody want to help them, that's a sign of weakness. It's a lie. You understand? It's a lie. Man took on a, 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 a disordered, corrupt consciousness, accepting himself as something other than his true being. So if I got enough money, I'm somebody. If I got a fine car, a house, or whatever, I'm somebody. I'm acceptable in the circles of this society. But if you love this world, then you're going to hate the kingdom. And you're going to need the kingdom. You understand? The God of this world is a liar. He lies. You can't trust him. The Bible say he was the one in the Greek who changed the truth of God to the lie and worship and serve the creature. That's what Satan is, is a creature of God rather than the creator. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. So I want you, I'm going to stop right here and we're going to pick up on some more of this tomorrow. I'm, I'm simply letting you know the value of the gifting that God has placed in you. Why that you catch hell all the time is because you're rich and you're full of a treasure that you may or may not know about. And so I need to make sure that you know that you are the center of all the war, of the treasure that God has placed within you and has spoken over your life that you shall live and not die. Be the head and not the tail. Oh, glory to God. Aren't you happy? Aren't you knowing, knowing that every time we speak by faith, that word is washing me from the old man and restoring 
and, and bring into life the new man that's made in the image and likeness of God that enables me to do exceedingly great things, greater than the things that Jesus said. He said, and greater works than these you're going to do because you're going to walk in your true identity, which is me. Oh, blessed be the name. I got to quit. Why? Because I just simply ran out of time. You know how that is. So I want to thank God for you joining us tonight. Make sure you share these broadcasts. Invite others to, to the broadcast. We're going to try to make it so plain that even a fool can't err. But we've got to, amen, understand what the Lord is doing. And I've got some news. I'm not going to uh, divulge it right now. But there's some great things that God is getting ready to do. Won't you be on board uh, and, and, and get, get plugged in and start doing some things? Because once you do that, it doesn't matter which way you come, everything in the body gets nourished because you're in the body. I might eat with my mouth, but amen, my body, amen, supplies that nourishment to every part. You're not going to be left out. My hands ain't getting left out because it doesn't eat. My mouth, amen, does it, but it shares it to the rest of the body. And I'm trying to tell you, you ain't got to be the head. You ain't, you ain't got to be the apostle, the prophet, and the pastor, teacher that in that capacity to, to, to uh, enjoy the fullness of God. You, because you're in the body, you're going to enjoy everything that everybody else gets. You just simply got to be found in him, not having your own righteousness, but partaking of the righteousness and the nature of God in you. I want to thank you for joining us tonight and every night. Join us every night at 845. We're going to be do, try to do this sharp and uh, pray for us because we're on the front lines of, 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 of spiritual attacks. But that's all good. You understand? If we weren't getting attacked, that means we weren't doing something right. But blessed be the name of Jesus. Amen. That the Lord, amen, is on our side and no weapon form is going to prosper against us. But we're asking, amen, that you will take up the battle and join us in sowing and reaping. Sow, amen, into this ministry. Many of you, amen, are sowing. Uh, uh, and I ask that you sow. This is an opportunity for you to increase, amen, whatever your hand is doing sow into the ministry. God gave you those seeds to sow. He gave you the job. He gave you the bonuses. He gave you the business. Amen. Amen. If you want to, amen, accelerate everything that, amen, God has put in your hand, then you got to sow it. Well, because the law of sowing and reaping states, what several man soweth, the same shall he reap. So if you need more money, sow it and sow it in cheerfulness, knowing that I'm doing this because there's an unbreakable law. That once I do this, God sees my faith and he, amen, executes according to his word. God knows no man by the flesh. He watches over his word to perform it. So you got to step out in faith. Don't let money rule you. You be the ruler of the money and you'll have more than enough. You'll lend and not borrow because the kingdom demands us to be wealthy to store, the, to restore the kingdom in the earth. God calls us to get wealth to establish the kingdom in the earth. I hope you're a part of that bunch. And amen, don't amen, be a part of this amen world. So sow into this ministry. The cash app is dollar sign e -Pits give. Amen, again, the cash app is dollar sign e -Pits give. Some of you can sow $50, $100, $1,000. Some of you got businesses and you can sow way more than that. We're looking, amen, to purchase a dually truck and a, 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 a trailer that will, amen, convert into a stage because I'm going to do, hopefully, some street meetings and I'm getting the tent up and we're just going to go out and we're going to, amen, open up our mouth and let God establish what he wants to do in this earth. Be a part of that. You might can't go, but you can be a part because you sold into this ministry. You sold into the prayer and every everything happens. Everything is a blessing. It's not how much you sow. It's the fact that you believe it enough to take action. Do you believe, amen, in this ministry enough to take action? Well, if you do, then sow, amen, and watch God bless you bountifully. I got to go, y'all. I just simply run out of time. I'm going to say this. May the blessing of the Lord run you down and overtake you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Blessings on you.